name is Mark McGill. I'm going to be talking about the precast and uh, concrete and the BIM uh, process. Um, the company's Create Concrete, um, based in Town Bridge, um, and operation for about 30 years. Um, um, uh, family owned, um, plus about 450 staff with uh, 55 million turnover. Um, core business is uh, hollow floor flooring, um, currently generating about 40,000 square metres a month of hollow core. As you can see, we also do stairs, agri products, small precast, like lentils, cells, and um, that type of stuff. We're the agent in Ireland for Bradstone, and we also have an ABC region, which is essentially aggregate blocks and concrete. Um, bespoke products, which would be sandwich panels, cross walls, columns, beams, architectural panels, um, terrace units. We've uh, had that as part of our business for a number of years now, and, uh, but it's probably become more prominent in the last three years or so. Um, we've become more involved in 3D design and build projects. Um, we recently completed Cow School on the Isle of Wight which is about three and a half million um, project involving precast, cross wall, um, sandwich panels and uh, steel, steel structure interface. Um, currently we have a number of other um, 3D projects. We have uh, Bearsden Nursing Home in Glasgow, which is a five storey um, cross wall, fully precast structure. And we have Trinity Ramp in Newcastle, which is a, essentially a, a service access ramp for um, Tesco and the Trinity Square developments, uh, it's about a million and a half, it involves curved uh, spandrel beams, precast columns, um, arching over um, buildings and roads, so it's, it's very complex and the 3D is proving invaluable there. Um, next thing is kind of, I'll just touch on our process really from tender to site in terms of um, BIM or 3D modelling. Um, on medium to large scale projects, um, we would actually produce a 3D model um, for sales and estimating guys. From that, they would do a piece count, they would look at erection times to sort of give us um, a better understanding of what the job's going to cost and obviously put us in a position where we can give the most competitive price without um, being out of pocket. Um, on successful um, tendering, that 3D model is then used as developed and used for final design and detailing. Um, our production details are extracted from the model, uh, freshly to the factories, um, to produce moulds, finished product, um, anything that we need. Um, the SPACs and site teams would use the reports that we extract and run from Tegla, giving um, um, piece sizes, dimensions, etc., so we can sort of plan what types of lorries we need, low loaders, curtain siders, all that sort of things. Um, site erection, the guys would use the model. Um, they maybe wouldn't be au okay with the software, but they would come in and sit with the detailer, he would go through it, they would look at different areas, identify problems um, and sequence accordingly. Um, I'm going to focus now on Laser Arena, as the guys have there as, as the main case study. Um, this photograph was taken on I think it was the middle of November. Um, there's a few levels of holocore in there. Um, that's the upper tier terracing, which is the three bays of that in place. And I have to be honest that um, I resisted the temptation of booking my holidays when that was about to go to site, because we could imagine there would be an avalanche of phone calls, because you've got a splayed terrace on a parabolic curve, meeting steel, and I can honestly say that the calls didn't come, with no problems whatsoever fitting the terracing and uh, it's, it's a credit to the 3D modelling process and I think the, sort of the QA in the factory. Um, overview on Leeds Arena, um, we were responsible for design and erection of all the precast elements which consists of hollow core slabs, stairs, terrace units and wall panels. Um, create a team design and detail with three guys modelling and taking it, four guys um, using AutoCAD, RC CADs for reinforcement. Um, manufacturing team 18 spread over factories in um, Tombridge and Tyrone, where we've our bow um, holocore production. Our site erection guys, I reckon there's about 15 guys involved between fitting the wall panels and the terracing and the holocore. 
in terms of logistics, a couple of figures just of interest. There's almost 7,000 tonnes of concrete, um, including all elements, and that's equated to about 377 loads shipped across the RIC. So you can imagine um, we're shipping across the margins for error sort of don't exist because if you have to go to site and something doesn't fit, you get it remade, you get it shipped across, it's, it's critical really you get it right first time. Um, overview of Korea's contract really consisted of 508 envelope wall panels, that's the essentially the, the precast walls, 150 thick that clad um, the outside of the building. Um, we had 67 vomiting pieces, which were stairs and walls and header panels um, within the bowl. Um, 63 stair flights. Um, sorry. Um, over a thousand terrace units. I think it gives an interesting statistic that it's almost six and a half kilometres of terracing around that job. Um, it's 522 step units scattered about the bowl. Um, Ten and a half thousand square metres of hollow core. And then 14 linear metres of edge trim, which basically was um, shutter for permanent shuttering for the, the hollow core that we uh, supplied and fixed. Project value to us was about 2.7 million. A um, couple of photographs now, um, just to give you an idea of what was going on. This is a uh, this shows the sort of the inside wall on the model and the terracing there, and that's those light blue or vomitry stairs. Um, I think you can see the resemblance really to the model when you look at the, the photograph of what's actually been constructed. Um, very similar, as, as you would hope, I suppose. Um, the, the use of colour in the model, I think I wanted to sort of draw attention to that. Um, it's not just there to make it look nice. Um, when you're sort of looking at someone's complex, as this when you're saying not everybody has Tecla or can use Tecla, we can send snapshots in the normal way via email, we send it to our site guys. When you can sort of describe something in colour and explain something to somebody, even even um, in terms of talking to fishers or talking to BAM or talking to the Arctic, you can zoom in on areas and, and sort of like, get your point across much better. Second um, benefit of the use of colour is that we actually sort of coded our elements so it, it highlighted to us slight differences that wouldn't be very apparent if you didn't know. The, the yellow wall panels at the top are essentially 150 thick panels, but they're an incline and subsequently we had to put different lifters in them so the guys on site had a, a different methodology for erecting them. Um, the blue panels there are just standard corbel panels. Um, the yellow and the blue, essentially the same thing, but there was that subtle difference in terms of the, the erection side of it and what the factory had to do. Um, terracing, coded sort of for upper tier and lower tier. The simple fact, it, when you zoom around this model, and you take, it's so easy to get lost, it's incredible because there's so much going on. Um, we simple things like that fairly helped. Um, next one I'll show is just sort of give you an idea of the complete. This is in behind. The terracing is underneath. This is what's supporting it. Um, it was just to give a flavour, if you can imagine, these notches are all critical. The span sort of dictated the size of the downstand. If you notice, there's no notch in that terrace unit, and there's notches in those ones. As you go up, that's going to be hard to see, but those notches will get bigger because the, the spans increase because there was a splay on these rakers. Um, we had to bespoke sort of mould each of those terrace units to ensure it fit it. Um, it's not quite clear there, but that's a, a vomitory wall with angles cast in it to pick up um, and support the terrace at that point. Those were all extracted from the models that meant that the guys in the fire date, everything was bolted on, went to site and was in the right position. Um, next slide is just showing the sort of production process. I think I included this really because when you look at the model and when you look at the, the photographs of site, you would sort of think, where do you start with some of that shape? And it, it sort of shows we extract our mould drawn. The guys tie their cage to suit that mould drawn. Then it's cast into these are terrace moulds. Essentially, that's the, the beam section of the terrace um, with the, the horizontal pieces down in here. If you notice that mould, that notch size is much bigger than that one. The reason being that spans much longer and the, the effective depth of the beam needs have increased. These were all um, you know, varying 5, 10 mil as you went up the bowl, so there's was an enormous amount of work in getting this right. Next one is, uh, this is up at the Prisenium Truss, I believe is the correct term for it. And uh, essentially what it is, it's, uh, I think these are large voids for M&E &E coming through at the top, of the, the top of the stage area. The reason I'm showing this is it's quite interesting. If you notice, 
I don't know if you can see that for a clear. There's actually a joint line there between those two panels. But on the model, there is no joint line. The reason being, it was detailed up. This was a, an earlier revision of the model. The guy didn't know, or our data didn't realise that steel was going to be in place, shown in green there. So he just drew that as one panel with a notch in it to allow the steel to come afterwards. Our site guys were looking down at the direction sequence, and it uh, just shows you the benefit of there. The guys viewed the model, and the guy picked up, looking at the phasing that that steel would be in, and subsequently we got it changed, and that was formed in the factory as two pieces. And no cutting on site, and you know, basically it illustrates that you're resolving problems before they occur. That's 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 the, you know, the secret, I suppose, of this system. Um, this here is a view of the external uh, envelope walls. This stepped arrangement, if you can imagine, I'm showing you here, um, sort of follows the, the shape of the terracing. Um, this area really, the walls were actually an acoustic panel. Um, in terms of what we had to do, we just had to make a 150 thick wall, but apparently this meets some acoustician's requirements. Um, we would have been happy to clad the whole thing in concrete, but obviously there's a cheaper material that can go in here because it's not the same acoustic requirements, so that's why we, we step along in this strange sort of profile. Um, this next photograph shows you what's going on inside from that previous snap. And uh, I think I've showed this because if you can look at the amount of steel in this area here in terms of photograph, there's connections everywhere. There's corbels in these panels. There's a terracing coming in on a splay at a parabolic curve. Um, the amount of time that the detailers and Korea and Fisher's guys spent sending this back and forth to each other, because um, we, we sort of had a driver here in terms of this secondary steel, that I'm sort of highlighting there to support the, the corbel panels, was um, like from, it, was, it, was, it was an instruction from BAM. We were trying to reduce and minimise the amount of steel we had to put in there by adjusting our panel sizes, by adjusting as many things as possible. It was a, it was a, it was a value engineering exercise, and this was what we caught with after like, several um, attempts. Next one, this is a photograph taken 10th of May, the last time I was over at the site. Um, Terrace was all complete apart from this area here, which is a uh, phase six, and uh, that was actually installed on. Excuse me. That area was installed on Wednesday, 45 terrace units um, in one day, which was phenomenal for anybody that's involved in site works. Um, our target, our program target, was 20 a day, and uh, I don't know where they were promised today off or something, but the guys horse those in basically in record time. So it just shows they weren't even slagging off after doing all that. Um, this area here is now all complete bar eight panels which we are due to finish today. And uh, that's that's actually the precast complete on this on this um, project. Um, just a couple of points to note sort of in terms of the 3D modeling or BIM, whatever way you want to describe it. I think it really assists us from, well, these are maybe obvious, obvious points, but building visualisation, you know, we were fit to see what was going on um, before, it was, before it was built. Um, it gave us like, um, clarity in our interface with steel structure and how we accommodate tolerances and packing because we're obviously a terrace and a slope. Um, clash detection is obviously the, the main feature and the main benefit of this um, system. Um, design of connection details between precast to precast and steel to precast and everything else. Um, and it helped us with design of complex moulds because I don't have any good photographs of them really, but it was a number of like, curved stairs we made in one piece, which we got bespoke steel moulds cast for. I was going to go out to the yard, take a couple of photographs of them to show, but the scrap man had already been in and they'd been cut up. Just time waits for no man sort of thing. Um, and then finally, just a summary, is a basic our project ran according to the program, which I think everybody's touched on, which was critical in this job. Um, main contractor, extremely satisfied. I believe that's correct, Chris, hopefully. Um, design and direction for Korea worked very efficiently in terms of far side of things that went well for us. Everybody sort of had a win-win in this job, if you like. Um, it was high quality concrete elements. Um, just a couple of points that I wanted to add to that really was that 
Um, I know it's all IT and there's computers, it's BIM and all this, but a big thing I think was important to this job was the, sort of the working relationships between um, BAM and Populous or up Fishers in Korea really made the difference on this job because we've, we've been using 3D modeling for perhaps five years now and this job is different in that, that BAM managed in such a way that everybody met and were much more familiar. You, know, you were able to pick up the phone and phone an architect with no you know, there was no sort of hidden agenda between guys doing this. Everybody was very open, and that was, I think, was was a key to this job. Um, Korea and Fisher's obviously worked very closely in that we were very open. We swapped our models regularly outside of the, sort of the normal Navis Works um, collaborations, and that was that gave us the opportunity between Korea and Fisher's to get the best possible model for us in terms of we could pick up the phone and say, look, can you move that fixing by 20 mil, or can you move your steel, or, or move your precast? Whatever you know, and it really smooth things along. Um, I think last thing I say was the program in this job was extremely tight, and uh, the phase direction meant that we really had to be up behind um, Fisher's guys and like, pushing behind them because the rule would be reversed um, the next week when they were pushing sort of up behind us, and uh, really without the benefits of the 3D um, system and the class detection, and I'd have to say as well. Our QA and our factory, we really had to focus on that as well to make sure everything had to be right. Um, we really would not have delivered on this project. And that um, concludes my presentation, so thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>